We're Kim and Al. Last year, we made some pretty big changes. We retired, sold our house in the city, and moved north to an old farm homestead at the end of its life. Our plan is to build an off-grid home ourselves. This year, with our solar and septic systems completed, as well as basic four season shelter, we're ready to take on the challenge of building our forever home. We're excited to share our experience as we continue to create this new life on the North River. to share with you excited we just got a uh, early Christmas gift FedEx just dropped it off about an hour or so ago um, so it's a um, starter solar kit um, before we get into the details of that we'll just explain to you why we got this and the problem that it's solving for us um, fairly straightforward we, we want to have some low voltage LED lighting solutions down by the, the water uh, we, we never did get to build our dock uh, but we have all the materials for that and that's going to be one of the early projects that will start up when the uh, when the ice comes off the river So once we have the dock in place, we'd like to have some some lighting, you know, maybe some ground lighting um, Maybe some strings of lights in the pine trees um, just down at the edge uh, And you know things like that and we want to light up our Christmas tree uh, that we planted uh, the one that we had to move uh, So it wasn't cut down by the hydro company so uh, one one option would have been to just run wire from our existing system down there, but uh, anyone in the know, uh, copper wire these days, and for a while anyways, is, is really expensive. And in honesty, this starter kit, 200 watt kit, cost probably less than the price of 100 feet of 10 uh, gauge copper wire. Um, that would be rated for underground. I wouldn't want to be running it overground. Um, I'm not building hydro poles and I also don't want uh, to have to bury it if I can avoid it. So rather than try and run wire, uh, you know, 300 feet down to the, the river, what we decided is we're going to build kind of a uh, Frankenstein glorified wheelbarrow of sorts, but it'll be more of a square box. Inside the box, I'll put the charge controllers and inverters and, the, the, you know, any of those, those things that we get. Um, and then the panels themselves will just sit on top and I'm going to build a hinged rack for it. So the idea will be you wheel it or pull it like a travois to wherever you want it and then set it down flat. There'll be some legs to sit it on and then fold up the panels. I'll, you know, put something rudimentary together so that we can adjust the angle. Uh, probably not as infinitely variable as the, the, the panel array we built for our main system. Um, and then that way we'll have a small solar powered system that we can use wherever we need it on the property when we need it. Um, the one major use we have will be the outhouse in the summer. We need a small amount of power to run uh, the DC fan on our separate composting toilet. We also want to get a DC pump so that we can have running water in the outhouse and a little shower off the back. So that's kind of our summer use. Um, and then in the winter, we'll wheel that wheelbarrow system a little closer to the Christmas tree and then we can set it up there to run any lightings down by the water and, and the Christmas tree. That's really basically it. And then the other thing I thought of too is we had a DC pump for the well to replace our broken hand pump. Um, then I can just wheel that over at times when we want to pump some water out of, a, out of the old existing well. So it's kind of just like having a portable generator, but rather than running on gasoline, this will be running on uh, our wonderful friend, Mr. Sun. Um, so, again, this was $319 Canadian plus applicable taxes. It was on sale for 41% 41, uh, 41 off. I'm a sucker for a sale. So we bit the bullet, we bought this, and so far I'm pretty happy with it. I'm impressed with the, with the materials and craftsmanship. Like, no cracks, no problems in any of the cells, no obvious damage or anything like that. Um, comes with the Z brackets to connect the panels to whatever you want to connect them to. Um, aluminum. Um, and then you have 
either lag bolts if you're going to drive them into something and you have these connector bolts as well actually you know what i might be wrong about that i think these connector bolts are to secure the brackets to the panels themselves and then these are lag bolts to basically drive them into because they look like they're self-tapping uh, to drive them into whatever frame you build for them whether it's a roof or in our case our funky little solar wheelbarrow so that's the hardware then you have a temperature, uh, basically a thermometer for the batteries. So that plugs into this little port here on the charge controller. And then you either uh, maybe silicone it to the side of the battery or black tape it or something. But you want that to basically measure the ambient temperature uh, around the battery. So that's that. Then there's two battery tray cables. These will attach to the battery ports in the charge controller. And that's the first step. You hook the charge controller up to the battery. These would go on to the little um, terminal connectors. So that would power the charge controller. And then these two cables are your MC4 connectors. That will go from the PV positive and PV negative to the panels themselves. Um, we're going to hook them up in series. Uh, I think we went over this in a little more detail before, but just really quickly, you can wire your panels in series or parallel. If you wire them in series, you're going to add your voltages and your amperage will stay the same, your current. Uh, if you wire them in parallel, then you're going to add your current and the voltage will stay the same. So the power in both cases, this is a 200 watt panel. So Conceivably, you can get 200 watts from this. It doesn't matter how you wire them, you're gonna get 200 watts. So if, you, if we use simple math, we'll say five amps and 10 volts, that would be 50 watts, five times 10, right? So if we took two of those panels and we put them together in parallel, then you would have 10 amps and 10 volts, that's 100 watts. But if you did it the other way, then you would have 20 volts and five amps, you still have 100 watts. So potato, potato. Um, the reason that you would want to double your voltage or, or sorry, increase your voltage over amperage is that higher the voltage, the more efficient the transmission of current over long dis longer distances. Um, and it does also depend on the charge controller that you use. This is an MPPT controller. I should have looked it up. Um, but I don't remember what the acronym is. The other type of charge controller that's uh, common is a PWM, pulse width modulation. I couldn't tell you anything about the science or engineering behind them. I just know that MPPT controllers are preferred. They cost a little more, but they can also deal with higher voltages and they're uh, far more efficient and smart. In other words, they're better at, at charging the batteries. They're also, my understanding, are very good at kind of juicing uh, low sunlight conditions. So PWM controllers don't do well in low sunlight conditions, cloudy conditions, where MPPT chargers do. Um, so long story short, that's what we've got now. Um, the only thing that we're missing are some fuse connects. So I'm going to look into that. Uh, we would need a 20 amp fuse from the uh, charge controller to the battery because that's the output, the max output from the charge controller. And then from the panels to the charge controller, um, since I think the peak uh, current output is 5.85 amps, I'd probably get like an eight, uh, eight amp fuse or something like that. Just in case the panel shorts and, and, sh and sends too much current to the, to the charger. I'm not even sure what the things are that can happen. I just know from what I've read that you should have a fuse between your panels and your charge controller or a combiner box or breaker box, and then as well uh, a fuse between your charge controller and your batteries. But that's it in a nutshell. Um, the next big step obviously will be to get the lumber to build that wheelbarrow system. Um, it's going to make use of some giant casters that we bought and never used. We were originally going to build a gate with that and have the casters to swing the gate out, but never really did that, so now we got another use for it. It's great to upcycle things. And that's really it. Wish us luck.
quick update on our little impromptu solar system for lighting and such. We got our lights for the Christmas tree. Uh, pretty awesome, these LEDs. So this is a uh, 100 foot string. Um, comes with a, a little remote. It runs on one of those little CR20, whatever they are, 2022 batteries. Um, the little round disc battery. Um, anyways, they have a white color um, and then colored lights and with the remote you can go through different modes. They shine, yada yada yada. Um, anyways, pretty chuffed about that. They only run six watts, so which is bananas. So that means for a, a six hour period, you know, from dusk till, till nighttime, um, that's 36 watts. That's like a third of the power needed for one hour of, uh, of, of Starlink. So, very, very efficient. Um, this is not the right battery <laughs> for a solar system. This is my old truck battery. Um, we ended up uh, with a starter motor that died, and in diagnosing that, we bought a new battery, uh, thinking that it was just a battery that I had co croaked. It wasn't the case, but I'd already bought and installed the battery, so this is now sitting around, um, you know, gathering dust. So my understanding, and from what I've read, is typically you do not want to use a starter battery, which is your car battery. It is built with thinner plates. It's meant to produce a high amount of current for a very short period of time. Um, so if you were to try and treat this, uh, if I look at the rating, it's an 80 amp hour battery. But if you tried to treat this like an 80 amp hour battery, um, like a deep cycle battery, which can be depleted much further, uh, you're going to kill it. However, my plans for this battery at the moment are two things. Right now running these solar lights, which are 6 watts uh, per hour, and then running the um, a fan for the outhouse, uh, which I think is 2 watts uh, per hour. So my hope is with this 200 watt system, which is a little bit overclubbed for this battery, um, that we'll just keep it tippity topped up and the small amount of draw that we're pulling off the top is probably not much different than uh, the constant draw that any vehicle has. So for those of you that know, it's not like your battery is completely without load when you turn off your car. There are security systems that continue to require power, um, monitoring system sensors and things, yeah, like the flashing light on the dash of our truck. Um, so there is, it is capable of delivering a small amount of power, but if I was going to hook an inverter up to this and try and run like a 5 watt device, um, for sure I'll, I'll crush this battery all day long. So that's our, chi our, our idea. If it works out and the battery stays healthy for a while, then we'll just you know, run it until it needs to be recycled and then get a proper deep cycle battery. Um, but we can squeeze some life out of this. I don't know, I'm, I'm hoping at least a few years just because we have it and what are we going to do with it? So uh, the other thing is I'm sitting here holding that I should probably explain <laughs> is uh, in order to keep the battery warmer, the warmer the battery, the, the, you know, the more power or more, yeah, more current it'll produce. Um, I built this little insulating box. The idea is that this would be removable. I have already uh, cut a couple of grooves in here. I cut them on sloping angles just to keep rain out and things like that. Same thing with here. I've left this open so what I'll have is a cap that sits on top. Um, this little opening will allow the hydrogen gas, I think it's hydrogen, um, that, is, that is produced um, in the course of the battery doing its thing and charging, uh, I want that to vent off. Also, I need these two ports to run the cables out um, to go to the charge controller. So the idea is that in the winter, we'll bundle it up like this. Uh, that's two layers of, of the R10 hard foam, so it'll be R20. I'll have another layer underneath, so two layers underneath, two layers on each side. I need one more for here. Cap it, be done with it, and then in the summer, just pop that off and put it into storage and just leave the battery out and maybe have a little lid for it or something to keep it from getting wet, but uh, other than that, um, this should suffice. Uh, I know we talked about building a little wheelbarrow for this thing. Uh, I might still do that, but in the meantime, we just want to get it up and running, and I know it, it's really just two components that I have to consider. This battery, which I'm insulating, and then the charge controller, which I think can operate down to minus 35. So I'll build something to mount it in, and maybe just a little bit of insulation to keep it toasty, but uh, my understanding of the charge controller it generates a lot of heat. You want that to dissipate, so I'm not going to go uh, as far as sealing it up like I'm doing with this.
Walking around, feeling free Thinking about what's happened to me from July Up till now, don't know where, don't know how Lately I've come to realize That I can't see it in your eyes So it's true, I'm so glad you feel it too Nothing to hide but falling in love First one is battery positive. positive, battery negative, and there's the battery gets hooked up first. Okay. You hook up the negative terminal, and then you hook up the positive terminal. Double check. It should be this one. Yeah, the fourth one is a negative. Yeah, battery negative. The uh, battery right now is charging. You can tell because it was 12.6 at rest. When I brought it down here, now it's at 13.4 volts, now 13.5. So it is actively charging. If I cycle through the menu, it's now, there's no amperage coming from the battery to the load. That's what that's showing because we haven't hooked anything up to it yet. Then this shows the amps coming from the panels to the battery. And it's showing zero because, again, it's fully charged. So basically the system's at rest now. And it's saying that the batteries are at 7 degrees, which is not correct. That is not correct. I have to install this into the box. So this is the battery temperature probe. I'm just gonna wedge it in between the box and the battery. And then feed it through the little groove that I made for it. And then shut the lid. And I will close that up. I'll put a little tape on it just to hold it down, keep it from flying off on us. Mom, Tom? Yeah. We're falling in love. guys so we have cleaned up uh, upstairs and that's pretty much as much as we can do upstairs uh, right now until we start to actually take the walls off uh, which you know with it snowing and stuff we're not going to do that until we absolutely have to and so we're going to start on the first floor now and uh, that's all cleaned up as well so we're pretty excited because everything's cleared out of here everything's cleaned up uh, I didn't really show you any of that because I'm trying to um, be mindful of my camera I don't really want it in here as, you know, too much when the dust is being kicked up because uh, I don't want to wreck it. But uh, we will show you the progress as we go along. We're both pretty pumped. <laughs> Straight to go on together 
Why are you wearing a mask? 